Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Got my new setup going on here, so um, I was going to put it back the way it was, but I just didn't have a chance to do that. Hello, Diane. Hello, Pat. Hello, everyone. So happy that you are all here. Thank you very much. Um, so what we got today, we're going to do some coloring, but I do have a couple of things to just look at before because, you know, I'm just like that. I, I'm always doing like five things at once. So huh. anyway, um, the last time I did a stream on Sunday, um, I was talking about <clears throat> maybe setting up some kind of a um, ephemera project where I was going to do two wooden frames I, because I don't have a heat gun. I was going to do two so I could do, um, I could have a, um, one drying or setting while I was working on a second one. So um, what I thought I'd do today is give you a little preview of some of the ephemera that I have because um, a lot of it is actual vintage stuff that was given to me. And um, hey, Lisa and Charlotte, good to see you guys. Lisa, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, your artwork, your new stuff. That, oh my gosh, yes, thank you. Wow, it's cool. Uh, but anyway, um, I thought um, I thought I'd um, show you a little bit of the ephemera that I, that I kind of have laying around. It's not even all of it. I have so much stuff laying around. I, I have in our storage room a whole wall full of different kinds of paper, and I'm going to be sectioning that up and sending that in little ephemera packs. And I have an Etsy store. It's just that it hasn't really been running very it hasn't been running lately because I have a, a website too. So I've been doing everything through my web store, but I think what I'm going to do is, is convert my Etsy store into a um, more like a crafty store. And then my website is going to just be the standalone for this next year, at least. So what I have is this, you guys are probably going to laugh. I don't know if you guys remember this stuff, <laughs> bubble tape. Remember that? Oh my God. This is like almost older than I am. Anyway, this is one of the things that I was gifted. A lady was getting, she had a, a five by 10 and a 10 by 10 storage space. And um, she, hey, Mousy, Hey, um, Mousy, I, I sent your um, package off today. So, so um, it should be getting there really fast. Put in a couple extra things too. So, but anyway, um, this is vintage buttons and um i mean there's some really cool stuff look at that this one is really really neat it's like a little cameo i don't know if you guys can see that but there's an actual face on that and then there's like other ones there's these little pearly buttons little pearly things and i actually have um oh look at this this is adorable it's like a 70s bead or button it's a foot anyway but i actually have a whole um package of um real mother of pearl buttons in there that i'm not going to use so i just figure you know what oh here's some mother of pearl these are different i have more than i thought so anyway there's that one yeah um this is just part of the ephemera stuff i've got um i've got this antique lace I mean, I've got yards and yards of this stuff. And then I've got somebody took the time to cut something apart here. And this is really pretty. And that's antique. You can tell it's it's got that almost like a tea stained look to it. That's another thing. Hey, Nick and Tina, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. What will I use these for? Um, Pat, I'm gonna I'm gonna put these in ephemera packs and sell them in my Etsy store because I'm I don't really do the ephemera thing. I just make jewelry and, and I art, which is totally satisfying for me right now. And and I don't uh, the only reason I have most of this ephemera stuff is is that it was given to me, and I just didn't know what to do with it. But I realized that it had value, so I didn't want to get rid of it. You know what I mean? So anyway, but this is like a, a hot pan holder and it's two layers. So what I'm going to do is take, it's just stitched together. I'm going to take the stitches out and 
that'll be sent in a pack. Um, I, I make these little envelopes out of um, craft paper and pockets. And um, I could, because I have, like I said, I have probably a couple hundred pounds of paper that I have, have got to use up somehow. I've got little tags from another shop on Etsy called Chocolate Rabbit. And I didn't put that in the description, but I can later on. She, she does um, ephemera pack tagged and envelopes and stuff like that. But I bought some a few years ago and, and I use them sparingly because you can only use so many. This is another, this is another, oh darn it. Uh, another um, package of vintage buttons. These are pretty cool. Little, these I think are called love knots. Little love knots. And then there's other, these are like, some of them are plastic with an overlay of like, sort of metal stuff that looks like metal but isn't really and then like this one is is all metal so i've got all those and and that's just like a very small amount of what i have i have i sectioned up this this morning it was an old uh treasure island book that was falling apart so i i took all the pages out it was published in like 1901 so these pages, these are not tea stain pages. These are vintage antique actually now pages because they're over a hundred years old and then they're crispy. So you can still use them for like Mod Podge and stuff like that. But, um, and for like junk journals and smash books and things like that. But um, I won't be using them. So I'm going to include these in little ephemeral packs. And yeah, I've got other books that are vintage and antique books with the, the taint stained pages like that. And I'm just gonna section them all up. Um, I'm even going to do something with um, the uh, covers. And that that's your preview for the ephemera. But um, yeah, I, I kind of want to do a couple of frames and stuff and then have a giveaway of them because I have about 12 wooden frames that, I, that are, I'm not gonna do anything with them except for maybe paint them, but I would paint them and, and then paint, I would put a base coat on and then paint like other things on top of them. And I don't really do the ephemera thing. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, they're, they're pretty, they are treasures. That's true. Charlotte, did I say hi to you? I hope I said hi to you. So, um, just a couple of announcements. Of course, we've got the, um, Spooktober, um, Colorathon coming up on the weekend of the 26th, 25th, 26th, 27th. And Nick and Tina, if you want to put in the schedule for that in the chat, that would be super cool because that way people will know when everything is going to happen and, and all of that. Um, also, what else? What else? Huh. I think that's it. Mark will be here in a little while. He's still at work. He gets off, off of work at two and y'all know he works at home. So he's in the office right now, slaving away as he puts it. <laughs> and believe me, he's not having a very good day today. It must be like, this is second Monday or something. Anyway, um, yes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start this today. There we go, I evened out. And um, it's, the goddess Caridwen. Caridwen is a um, Celtic goddess. Um, her, some of her sacred animals were a um, hog and a chicken. And this is an otter. And this is a hound. This is a bird dove, I believe. And um, her cauldron was the cauldron of wisdom. And there's a, lead, there's a little story that goes along with the cauldron of wisdom. But I'm not going to tell you because I want you to look it up because I haven't looked at it in a long time and I don't want to give out any misinformation as far as, as Celtic legends go. I'm very Irish and I don't want to misrepresent. You know what I mean? So anyhow, we can start this. Um, I don't know if any, any of you guys caught Joanna Basford's um, short video this morning. I just happened to be up. Her book came out today in the U.S. and it's coming out on Thursday in, in the U.K., her new book, the How to Draw Inky Wonderlands book, which is really cool, actually. I, I don't, I'm not real fond of Joanna Basford's coloring books, but 
I like more creepy stuff, but um, yeah, she's an awesome person and she seems really, really nice and cool. And I'm just happy that someone that nice and that cool is so popular. It's totally cool. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm going to look. I buy ephemera. Oh, okay, Mousy. Save a lot of doodads for papers and books. And you know what? I, I'm doing that. I'm going to put it in my Etsy store because I need to get rid of it. So my prices aren't going to be astronomical. I know that some ephemera packs go for quite a bit of money. And I understand why. But I've just had this stuff laying around. So keep your eyes open on my Etsy store. And I will post it. I'll post it on, on Facebook. And um, if you... I'll just add it to the video description when I'm done here and, and I'll, I'll, that way you can go look at it. What's in there right now. I only have like five or six things in there right now, just to, just to keep it up and running because I didn't want it to be totally empty because I don't want, I don't want people to think that I'm not, you know, not there anymore. I, I guess. Let's see. Hey, Shannon, how are you doing? Hey, Starbuck and Brittany. Welcome and Rebel, hi there. Helen and BNC Business. Hello, everyone. Okay, so is this too bright? I'm hoping that it's not. I'm, I'm hoping that. Yeah. We don't have a real good setup yet. We're, we're working on it. It's just really, really. It's like uh, ordering things online is kind of like, you know. A crapshoot. You, you you either win or you don't. I mean, you can't sometimes tell from the descriptions. So yeah, yeah, I love this image. It's really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the skin, and I'm going to use Prismacolors. So um, I will be calling out uh, colors and numbers, and um, I if you follow along, awesome. Please don't think that you got to, you know, do all the same stuff that I do because it's your picture. I, I would rather people go with their flow than my flow. You know what I mean? So let's see. Let's do. She's Celtic. So she's kind of have she's going to have a probably a peachy. Let's do that one. Sienna Brown is the first one. Sienna Brown. There it is right there. Oh, that is not the one I wanted. There we go. This is an older one. I think it's one of the Sanford ones. But Sienna Brown is 945. And I think from there I'm going to go to the burnt ochre. Burnt ochre is 943. Um, almost the same color, so I don't know. It might change my mind midstream here. So, and nectar. Nectar is an awesome color. I love that color. You know what? I may actually go to chest. I'm going to pull out the chestnut too because I might change. I might change a little bit. These are orangey and this one's more rosy. So I might change to this one. Uh, 1081 is the number on the chestnut. And I use that a lot. You can tell this is a relatively new pencil and it's already like gone. A third of it's almost gone. <laughs> oh, and I was working on something today. I'm, I'm working on dark skin tones and I thought I'd show you guys because I love this image and I can't remember which store I got it, which Etsy store I got it from, but it's a PDF. And um, I thought it was coming out pretty good. Um, I really like her headdress and her raven and her nail jewelry. I actually have some nail jewelry similar to this that I wore to Renaissance Fair. So it's it caught my eye many times. <laughs> yep. And anyway, and I love doing roses. So I'm challenging myself by, by doing the, um, the dark skin tones. And I like her expression too. It looks like, oh yeah? Oh yeah? I don't know if you guys have seen, what was, what was that movie with um, Will Smith? Uh, where he throws the whale back out into the ocean. <laughs> He goes in the movie, he says, call me crazy one more time. Yeah. Funny movie. Uh, let's see, where am I going? Nectar. I need the nectar. 
So what's everybody coloring? Hi, Helen. Hello, Mike Sidebottom. I'm sorry, I wear bifocals and sometimes it's hard for me to read chat, but hello, Mark. And Michelle, hello, good to see you. Caught you live. <laughs> yeah, Michelle, huh? I don't, I don't, I only stream twice a week, so yeah. Helen is working on another N switch. Awesome. I got to do that too. I only have two done. And let's see. Um, let's see. Nectar, nectar, nectar. Whoops. It's over here. That is PC1092. Well, thank you for being here, Michelle. That's cool. And what else? Let's see. Um, deco peach, maybe? Peach. How about, hmm, what is this? I like this one. This one might be better. No, nope. I don't want that one. And no, I didn't, I didn't decide which colors I wanted before stream because, you know, I don't know. It's just, it seems more real for me to go, oh, I don't know, man, what, what do I really want? <laughs> I think this one looks good. Yeah, this one looks good. Light peach. It's 927. And I'll call them out again later. It's just, I, I wanted to call them out first off in case you're writing all, all of that down. So I have five colors. And I may not use them all. Um, a lot of the time I blend with this. This is a, um, a, a Coran Dash Luminance pencil. It's buff titanium. And it is a really great blending pencil. It's um, The color isn't white. It's like off-white. So it's cool for um, highlights, but it's also great for blending because it doesn't give you that stark white. And if you want stark white, and many times you will, the, the Prismacolor white is really good for that too. I don't always use a blending pencil, but sometimes sometimes I do. And, and I really like the um, Coran Dash uh, Blender Brights. They're a little different, but they work really well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sharpen this guy just a little bit. Oh, and I need my brush because I shouldn't be wiping the um, oh yeah hey guys have you guys seen the um all of the um inktober stuff online oh my gosh some of that stuff and may's picture oh gosh talk about hilarious i saw that i just about choked on my coffee that was funny yeah so I, i've been doing inktober not i think i'm improving too i mean always room for improvement right let me see here. I haven't posted I haven't posted overgrown because I just have it. I've been a little busy this morning. But I did kind of I did do this these. Let's see. I've got there's my dragon. And it's an ink wash. I'm using both waterproof and water soluble ink. And then my ash, and that's got pointillism on it. I love pointillism. I've been doing it for a long time. And then this is overgrown. We've got all these little ivies and stuff coming over this wall. And my signature trees. I have a trees like this painted on my bathroom wall. I should take a little video of that and put it on Instagram. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lisa. Oh, Mousy, I know. That would be cool. 120 colors of luminous. Yep. I've been reading about dragons since I was like 11 when I started reading, reading the Anne McCaffrey Dragon Riders series. And I just, I fell in love with those books. And um, the only problem I had with them was I was always thinking to myself, why does she have to make some of those names so difficult to pronounce? Um, I don't know. It's, it's probably a, because I'm an American and she was, British, I think, because they were probably easy for her to pronounce. So I don't know. I never looked into it. I just kind of muddled through. Uh, darn, those stories were good. Oh, I love them. In fact, 
I started having dreams about dragons after I started reading those stories. That was fun. I dream pretty vividly, so. Oh, thank you, Diane. Hi, Layla. We love you too, Nick and Tina. Okay, let's get started. Let's get started. Let's go here. Let's try that one first. Ooh. Sienna Brown, PC945, and I think I just got pencil shavings in my mouth. Ah, that was fun. Okay. Oh, get those off of there. Just start back here in the darkest spots. And this is on cardstock. I just printed it up on cardstock. I was going to print it up on tan toned or something like that, but it's grayscale. So, and it's really dark grayscale. So, I just figured I'd put it on cardstock and go with it. And I'm not going to do the background until last because the background kind of incorporates, you know, some some wispy steam coming out of the cauldron. So, and there is something under my page. Yep, there we go. And uh it's it's probably going to be um, complimentary or I don't know. I might just make it like, yeah, who knows? I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out as I go, which is what I normally do anyway. So... <sighs> I'm just reading chat. Dragon King coloring book. Oh yes, Mousy, I have that one. That is an amazing coloring book. I love it. I have that one. Oh, and I, uh, by the way, look for a video from me pretty soon. Um, Victoria, Vicky, Vicky, not Victoria, Vicky. Um, coloring with Vicky, Vicky Whitman. Um, yeah, she. She did a video just a few days ago about um, what 10 books would you want to take on a desert island if you could, you know, if you were going to go to a desert island, what, what 10 coloring books would you want to take? And um, she went through her stash and she showed coloring books that she'd want to take. And um, so I was the first one that commented on it. And I was like, this is a great idea for a video. So then she came back and she said, I'm, gonna, I'm tagging you for the next video. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Okay. I would love to. I never thought about that. Let's do it. So I haven't done it yet, but, and it's so hard to decide. I mean, you know, it's like, how do you pick? <laughs> and I don't have every coloring book in the world. So, I mean, I don't know if it would be fair to go, you know, that coloring book by so-and-so it's called blah, blah, blah. That's one of them. <laughs> Probably not fair. But out of the coloring books that I have, oh, darn it, I keep, I, I have only thought of, I've only actually added two to my list so far because the other one, I'm like, well, I want that one too. But wait, I want that one too. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. Yeah. So if you guys were, if you guys were on a desert island, what, what, and this is going to be harder. What three coloring books would you want to keep with you? Of course, you have stuff to color with. That that's kind of a given. But but which coloring books would you want to take with you? I know, Mousy. One set of pencils. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because I would be hard pressed to do that too. It would be like, I love my Prismas, but I also really love my Derwents. So which ones do? I, yeah, I get it. Dim the brightness on my camera. I was trying to do that, um, and I I don't know if I if I can do that. Um, let me see if I can back off a little bit. Um, uh, it's this lamp. It's it's really not a great lamp. Let's see. Does that work? Is that better? Is that too dark?
Helen says, Christine Karen, Ferris 2, Mysteria, and Linda Ravenscroft. Yeah, but Linda Ravenscroft has like five coloring books. But one of hers, I get it. Rebel Serene, I definitely would choose Serene and Circle Portraits. Those are two of them, but oh my gosh. Ugh. Meredith, yes, everyone should have Serene. Everyone should have that. That is a beautiful coloring book. It's a little better. Okay, all right. So I like this feedback. You guys are awesome. Another um, coloring book that's really cool is um, the, um, oh, now I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank. Ethno, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, it, it's got women from all over the world in their traditional um, dress, in their traditional clothing. And it's, it's line art. It's very, very, it doesn't have a grayscale like this. It, it's, it's very, um, unshaded and simple and i like that about it because then you get to um you get to modify it yourself and put in your own you know if you want to change the way the face looks a little bit not totally because you can't but um if you want to change certain details you can do that quite easily if it's not grayscale and and i really like that um so that coloring book is good. And the author, she is on, um, yes, Ethno Spirit. Yes, yes, Rebel. That's that's the one. Yep. And uh, Paul Barkin. Yeah, that's her. I, can't, I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but and I apologize to the author. But, um, oh, and Color Me Beautiful Women of the World is not a, that's a good coloring book, too. But yeah, the Ethno Spirit one, the author, oh my gosh, she has a um, YouTube channel and she has done, I don't know if you guys know that and I don't know if you've looked at it, but she has done some incredible thing with Hannah Carlson pages. And I just, I watch them and I just look at that and I go, oh my God, it doesn't even look like, you know, you, you can, you know, it's a Hannah, Hannah Carlson because she shows you what it looks like before she starts but she does so much to it and changes it so much. And it they come out so incredibly beautiful. They're just, and I look at them and go, I want to do that. <laughs> and I've been experimenting with uh, different uh, techniques, things that you can put on your paper so that you can add a lot of uh, pigment and, and different types of, of media to the page without ruining it, without going through it and without, you know, messing up the page in the back because on the back of the page or on the second page behind it or whatever, because I don't, I don't, coloring books are expensive. I don't want to do that. I, I want to be able to color it, but have it, um, have it protected so I don't have to worry about, you know, messing up other pages. So I've been experimenting with like spray fix and this stuff, is pretty good too. It's a, uh, let's see, there we go. Inherited this from my mother. It still works well. It's an all purpose sealer. It prepares wood and porous surfaces for painting. And it's kind of thin and it's not matte, but it's not gloss either. And um, it, it's kind of somewhere in between, but it works really well. I tried it out in a Hannah Carlson book today and it, and it, it really was very pleasing. I was happy that I that I had yet another resource for being able to color in a coloring book without ruining it, you know, without ruining other pages. Not that I would ruin it. It's just I uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna move this just a bit. There we go. Sorry guys. The stories and legends of yes, yes, Loretta, awesome. All the Annie Stig Gerard. Yep, that one's nice too. I like that one. 
Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Coloring Heaven book with different artists. Yeah, that's a good one too, Charlotte, because then you'd have different, you'd have a variety right off the bat to color. It's a very good idea. Oh, sorry, excuse me. My nose is really itchy today. We have a lot of stuff blooming around here right now. It's our second balloon season in southern Arizona. So, yeah, a little bit of a pain, but, yeah, you live here long enough. Kind of learn to expect it. And that's okay. You just take your Benadryl and go to sleep. <laughs> Just putting down some shadows, some shades. Darker. I love this color. This is that sienna brown. I love this color. Just real lightly. I like the way her hair is in this picture because it's all wild and flyaway. Makes her look more wild and flyaway. And I'm just going to use the light source from, you know, from where she's... The artist has it because it's beautiful the way it is. Keep checking to make sure I'm in frame. <laughs> oh, good. I have water. I completely forgot to even check before I started. Jo Beth, I lived in that city for eight years. Oh, you mean Apache Junction? Meredith? I'm sorry. Oh, Loretta, I love Dan Labard. The heat death. Awesome, awesome. Oh, lucky Helen. Halloween coloring heaven. Oh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know what? It, it, it's, it's almost like, um, it has a, a Apache junction almost has a small, small town mentality to it, small town feel to it. And, um, that can be a good thing. It can also be a bad thing. It depends on you. Like people who regularly break the law around here, it's a bad thing. Um, because then the, the police department knows you, you know, and, and, they stick together and the police department rocks here, man. I think they're really cool or they have been for us anyway. So I mustn't forget this part of her arm. Her hand is, is it's kind of funky the way she's got her, her hand here. It's her arm is her lower half of her arm is in front of the upper half of her arm. So the angle looks really funky, but it's cool. I'm just going to put in those dark shadows, give her some color, bring her to life. Yeah. So I lived in Sholo for nine years too. And oops, sorry. And uh, Sholo definitely has, you know, it's like a small town feel to it, too. Oh, um, Pat, the colored pencil paper is awesome. I love it. The Strathmore, it's really nice. Back then, there was one grocery store, one gas station, and a rated R video store. Well, you got to have that, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, oh, Michelle, you're leaving? Thank you for thank you for being here, Michelle. I appreciate that. And you have a great day. Oh, oh my gosh. Yep. One grocery store. Wow. I know in Sholo there was just that one Safeway for the longest time. And then there's there's a Walmart and um over in Pine Top, there's a Bashes. That's, that's, talk about small towns. Wow. 
but I loved it up there. It was beautiful. The people were nice. The there weren't a lot of different kinds of shops, you know, not like there are here in the valley, but um, they had they had enough to to you know keep you busy and stuff. And didn't they have the uh, what is that called? Big Springs Natural Wildlife Preserve. Oh, I used to go there all the time and take pictures. In fact, I, I took pictures there for my photography class when I went to college at Northland Pioneer College, where I taught later. And um, that was fun. My photography teacher does photography for Arizona Highways, and he has a card. He's a hoot. He's so funny. And he tells you these silly jokes, like the one that I told the other day, and I can't remember where, which chat I was in. I said, why did the elephant sit on the marshmallow? because he didn't want to fall in the cocoa. My father told me that when I was like four. And I was like, oh man. <laughs> but you know, my photography teacher, he, he would tell us silly jokes like that all the time. And he knew they were silly. He's just, he's just being fun. So yeah, it was cool. Loved the snow up there. I absolutely love cold weather. Living down here is killing me. Oh, let's see. Mesa, yeah. Oh, South Mountain? Yeah. Next to South Mountain. A lot of people still hike up there. In fact, I saw a news article the other day about... Um, a group of tourists from, I can't remember where, back east somewhere. It was like from um, Illinois or something. Um, they went hiking over around South Mountain and they, they didn't take enough. They took like one bottle of water and it was 104 that day or something. And they had to actually be rescued because they all got heat stroke, all of them. They just didn't, they didn't take, you know, they didn't, heed the warnings or take into account that they weren't used to this really dry heat. And oh my gosh. Yeah, that's scary. Heat exhaustion is really a scary thing. It is not fun. Been there. Let's see here. I need to uh, let's go around here. I think I'm going to bring this down a little bit. I think I'm going to give her green clothing too because she is kind of a green and blue. Green and blue sounds good. And because she's Irish, actually she's Welsh. Or she could be Irish. I like to make them Irish. <laughs> oh, let's see. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They tell you to stay on the trail for a reason, you know? Oh my God. Oh, yeah, Prescott is really beautiful. The Mugion Rim up in Sholo, that's that's beautiful, too. They've got a park where you can you can pull in and walk for about, mm, and you can't see this from where from the parking spaces, but um, you, you park, and then you go down this path, and it's a windy little path, and then all of a sudden, you are on the edge of the Mugion Rim, and you can see nothing but blue-green forest for, like, 150 miles, and it's that it's just, the view is astounding. I love going up there. In fact, when I was a kid and my parents used to, um, um, they used to be um, administrators for the single adult ministries group in our church. Um, we went on a camp out up there one time and that's where we went. And it's funny, you know, you go back a few years later and you're, and you go, oh my God, this is that place. Because I was, it was years. It's like 23 years later. Went back up there and, and I was just like, oh, I know this area. 
but I didn't realize it from, you know, you don't, you drive by it a hundred times and it's, you just don't realize it because you can't see the rim from the road. It's not that far away, but the trees. Wow. Yeah. I love it up there. The fishing is good up there. The catfish are huge. I'm just going to get her a little bit darker back here under the chin. Um, I think I'm going to. Yeah. Can y'all see okay? Is it, is it still okay? Coloring channels. Yes. Oh, Lisa, cool. Yeah, I love fishing. I don't I don't fly fish. My father used to fly fish. Um and that my mom used to love watching him. But um yeah, I, I like one day I caught like a I don't know, it was an eight pound catfish. Talk about he was <laughs> dragging the boat all over the lake. It was really fun. It was hard to relay them, and though they fight. And then another time, I bought, I caught a uh, a carp. It was an overgrown carp. It was really big. I mean, it was big. And I had to give my pole to my significant other because I was like, I can't do it. My wrist can't take this. So I didn't reel that one in, but that's okay. And then I let him go because I was like, How do you even cook carp? I mean, I know how to cook walleye and pike and trout is easy but carp I, I i guess you just do like a and it's supposed to be tasty eating too do like a filet or something like a salmon or whatever and i was just i was like i don't know what to do and if i'd been thinking i would have saved the catfish bones but i mean the head bone because it's really interesting and unique but I didn't. By the time I cleaned that darn fish, I was just ready to, to you know, I'm going to eat you now. So just lie still. <laughs> yeah, Loretta Welsh. Yeah. Yeah, trout. Lisa, catfish? I don't know. What is it about bottom feeders, man? They get, Shrimp and catfish and lobster, they all taste really good but they're bottom feeders. I don't know. Yeah, the trout. Oh my gosh. I caught a, um, I went on a camp out one time, courtesy of uh, my boss up in, not my boss, but my significant other's boss up in Sholo. And it was um, on an Indian reservation and it was run by um, Native Americans. And it, it, was up by, oh my gosh, Christmas tree lake. And um, only a few people a year got permission to camp there. And I mean, a year. And it, we're talking like maybe 15 people a year. And the camp out was like a week and a half. And we went fishing and I caught an Apache trout. And it was, I won because I caught the biggest one. It was four and a half pounds. And um, I know that seems really small. Oh my God, those the Apache trouts are beautiful. You fillet out carp, you have to get the red steak out of the meat. Streak, streak out of the meat. I don't like it personally myself, and I hate catfish. Loretta, a lot of people hate catfish from what I hear. Yep, bass is good. We got those too. In fact, um, my significant other. Uh, broke a record, caught a huge uh, bass. And oh my God, the babies are so cute. When they, it's like they're the, the shark of the lake because they will eat anything. The little, we had spinner baits on and the spinner baits, they're, they're all flash and hook. And the baby bass, they were like, they were chasing that we could see them coming up from the, the underwater plants and just coming up and trying to get those spinner baits. And we told later on, we told somebody that we caught the big trout with a spinnerbait and they're like, yeah, you did what with a spinnerbait. And we were just like, yeah, because we didn't know. 
You know, we didn't know that that's unusual. I guess it was unusual of the person we were talking to, but yeah, it was cool. But man, those bass are sneaky. The, the adult ones, they're sneaky. Hanging out in the tall grass until you, you know. I did almost catch a really big walleye once, and I caught a tire. <laughs> Hey, CC. Good to see you. Awesome. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, well, let's see. I think I'm going to give her a little bit of a cheekbone over here, too, because it just looks funny without one. Make her a little shade right there. Almost done with this color, too, so for the first round. So anybody who has a YouTube channel, Facebook page, a, um, a uh, Instagram, post it in chat so everybody knows, so they can go and subscribe to your YouTube channel, find you on Instagram, or join your Facebook page group um, so we can support each other. Oh. I just believe in supporting each other, especially in online communities, because it's they're so huge and impersonal. So well, a lot of the time they are anyway. So put up three hearts or, or three somethings after your name. If you have a YouTube channel, a Facebook page, group page, even if you've got a online store, put that on there, a website, put that on there. Just throw some information in chat because... We need to stick together. We need to support each other. Can everyone put up three hearts? Yes, yes. Yeah, Lisa. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. It made me hungry too. I love fish. You have a good day. Enjoy your dinner. There we go. Yep, Lisa's got a channel. Nick and Tina have a channel. Um, yes. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay, I'm going to put this color down for now. And that was Sienna Brown 945. And I'm going to move on to... Hmm, I'm going to move on to this one. It's Burnt Ochre um, PC 943. It's a little bit lighter, so I'm going to start back, into the, start back in the darker corners. And then I'm going to um, bring the color out a bit. So there's no, I'm going to blend it and bring it out. So there's no sharp lines or anything. Because that would be bad. It would look funny. I think it would look funny on my picture, on this picture. <laughs> And some people do start with light, light to dark. Um, when I'm doing skin, I like to go um, dark to light a lot because it um, establishes shadows and kind of gives shape to the object that I'm working in, to the, the body that I'm working on. And um, it's a little easier for me to follow that way. So that's why I do it that way. There's, there's, Laura was saying this morning, there is no right or wrong. Just you do what's comfortable for you. That's a great thing about art. You can break all the rules. So bring this up. There we go. She's got a little hair curl right there. I'm sorry I'm spinning my page so much, but I have learned that it's more important to have a comfortable, to be comfortable than to strain your wrist or arm. So there's that. Um, I'm just going to keep turning. I'm sorry if it makes anybody dizzy. It's, it's just the way that I operate. So I will try not to spin too fast, okay? 
Mm. So you guys want me to do a, a dark skin tone picture sometime in the future? And then we can just like go step by step. Yeah, Cece, I, you've broken a lot of rules. <laughs> uh, in art, oh, very funny. Oh. I think Lisa had to go, Nick. Nick and Tina. But I'm sure she appreciates the sub because she's she's trying to one of her goals is to get what did she say 500 subscriptions before halloween so greatly appreciated i am sure she's got a great facebook page too she just it, the group is really nice really great and fun too I'll go over that just a little there we go Hmm. There we go. That's a little better. It's blending. Got to get it blended or it bugs me. Oh, um, actually, Cece, Laura did uh, a tutorial with skin colors that included um, dark skin tones. And she's got a um, she's got a uh, in her group. If you join her group on Facebook, she's got a download that you can grab. It's either on her Facebook page group page or it's it's through her website. I can't remember which, but it's free. And it's, or it was free. It should still be free because I can't imagine her charging for it. She's, she's just too generous. Um, but yeah, um, the, the tutorial went through all kinds of different skin tones with different pencils, um, pencil sets, even right to the, um, regular old Crayola pencil sets. And, um, all the way up to like the, the really expensive luminance and um, let's see what else the luminance in uh, Derwent and things like that. So um, yeah, the um, it's a page you can download and it's in color. So it shows you, you know, what colors, what they look like and you just kind of blend as is shown on the paper. So, I suggest that to begin with. Also, another person, I think it was um, Sammy, Color and Chat with Sammy, did its tutorial on skin tones also. And each one is slightly different. So I, I recommend, what well, any art teacher would recommend, uh, that you look at as many as you can and figure out what's good for you. Let's see, just a little bit more there. And then go over here and put some color on her arm. I'm gonna do the other arm also, just a little bit. And I think I'm gonna fill this part in on this side. So she's got the light coming from the cauldron instead of also from over here. So I'm just going to fill that little line in. But I'm not going to fill it in really dark because there's still going to be reflective light coming from somewhere. Where's my brush? There we go. Oops. There we go. It's crumbly. 
bit. I wonder why. Hmm. It may have been something on my page right there. Where's my eraser? Hmm. There we go. Oh, I found out something yesterday, too. Black Widow pencils erase really easily. I was using the Black Widow Dark Skin Tone set for the Dark Skin Tone picture that I showed a little while ago. And I had to erase a couple things and um, just little bits here and there. But they erased almost completely, which I was super happy about. Just makes things a little easier. But yeah, I was like, ooh, one less thing to worry about, right? Oh, is KP Color, Rebel, is KP Colors a um, YouTube channel? Wow, chat's just kind of fast today. I'm going to leave that not so dark because this is going to have more peach in it right here and here because it's parts of her that don't probably aren't that skin probably isn't part of her that sees the sun very much. So that's going to be peachy, I think. I'm going to need my eraser again. That needs to be rounder right there. Oh, cool. Okay, thank you, Rebel. I'm going to have to look into that, too, because I'm always, always wanting to learn more. Never stop learning. That's my philosophy. I'm going to go back to that darker color. Where's my darker color? Ah! I'm going to go back to the Sienna Brown, the PC945, real quick here for a few minutes. And kind of just fill this in a little bit right here. I'm going down this way. little darker on the corners and underneath and the last thing that I'm going to do is uh, on the picture is um, of course shade shade a little bit more because um, like touch up shading last minute things once I get everything in then it'll be easier to see what I need to do there too so it's cool Hmm, I'm going to go back to Burnt Ochre PC943 and color. I didn't do this over here yet, so I need to even this out and blend it in. I'm going to start back at the darkest spot and do some blending and bring the color out as per usual. There we go. Yep. I'm going to get some water real quick here. Oh, much better. Much better. Okie dokie. Hmm. Well, 
it's almost three o'clock and Mark is off work. He's probably listening to this right now. He's outside with the dog. But yeah. So we both got up at 5 a.m. this morning. Kind of hard to sleep when your back hurts really bad. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a pain. Mm, seriously, though. Oh, I forgot to do the darkest part there, too. Right under her hand in that dark shadow part. Uh. Hey, Mark's here. Woohoo! That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to turn on a fan because this shirt I'm wearing is really hot. Uh-oh. Can you guys still see okay? That turned on the light, too, and I can turn that off if you need me to. You know what? I think I will because it's casting a shadow. There we go. That's better. Wait a minute. Which one is my darkest one? Sienna Brown. There it is right there. I found it. Okay, why are you flashing me, screen? Okay. Do a little bit of color in her palm. Her palms are going to be lighter, though, because palms are generally lighter. I love her angle on this hand. It's so nice. It's unusual. You see that? Oh, hold on. Sorry. Her hand right there. She's got the foreshortening down to a science. Excellent. A little bit of dark shadows in there. Just a little. Yep. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my burnt ochre. PC943, bring this down a little bit, blending the darker part also. Yes, that looks good. Wow. Oh. Hey, Rochelle. I'm sorry I didn't see you till now. Had my head in a coloring book. As they say, <laughs> oh, yeah. Hmm. That's why when I'm in chat in different in other streams, I don't talk a whole lot because I'm usually um, drawing, coloring, or today I was actually tearing up a. I was. Yeah, I was cutting out and tearing up a, a old urban flower book for the ephemera stuff. I completely forgot to show you guys that, but there's a lot of cool stuff in it. And um, uh, I just went through it because I could. It was one of those that I got at the thrift store for like a buck and a half. So I really have no problem using it. Um, two years ago, if you told me that I was going to be taking books and tearing them up and cutting things out of them, I would have said, oh, God, sacrilege. No way would I do something like that. But, um, yeah, that's what I did this morning. I um, I was going to take them all to a, our store, and we have a store in Mesa called Bookman's. You guys, some of you probably know about Bookman's. It's a um, 
used, they take used books and they give you either cash or store credit. And um, of course you get more store credit if you go that way, you get like twice as much more. But so you'll get, if you take in a book, you say that that costs you $10, they can give you $2.50 store credit or five or $2.50 cash or $5 store credit. So they give you like a quarter of the price and then a half of the price in, in credit, which is really cool because then if you, if you build up your credit, you can buy really expensive things and you can use the credit from books for anything in the store. So that's cool. Um, I bought myself, I bought myself, I traded in a whole bunch of books and magazines a while back and I got a uh, mandolin used to play mandolin and um, I had to give it up to pay rent at one point years and years ago when my kids were small. But um, uh, yeah, so I got myself a mandolin. It's not the same kind. I had a round back C mandolin and now I have a flat, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Um, I think it's a F mandolin it's gorgeous it's beautiful it's black it's, it's only i have a picture of it on my instagram somewhere but um it sounds great and i can play it reasonably well um well i could before i got sick after i got sick i couldn't sit up for a really long time and play it because i had too much um because i had this major surgery and they had to go in through my abdomen and you know how that goes you have surgery through your abdomen and you have to there's an incision, you have to heal. And so I couldn't, uh, I couldn't sit up and I couldn't have anything on me. So that kind of went on hold. But yeah, Bookman's is a great place. They have um, video games and cameras and camera equipment, musical instruments, old magazines, um, all kinds of toys and DVDs. And man, if I worked there, I'd would never have a paycheck. I'd just say, Hey, you know what? I'll just trade you work for all of this. <laughs> mm, yeah. It'd be difficult because dang, I love books, but um, yeah. The whole trade thing is really great. It just, I always said it would be neat if we could go back to the barter system because then, you know, I mean, I've got this dozen eggs. I don't want them, but somebody else could be like, Oh, eggs. And then they could, you know, I've got this coil of handmade rope. I don't need it. And then you could be like, Oh, a rope. I need that. And of course everyone gets the better end of the deal because that's what they need. But yeah. So I, I think the barter system is awesome, but unfortunate that we don't, we hardly ever get to do that. Recently, I, I did get to do a barter system thing with a girl who, a woman who has um, ducks and got some duck eggs. We bartered, um, let's see, she needed some stuff from my shop. I gave her the stuff from my shop and I got two dozen duck eggs. And that was like the coolest thing ever. So yeah, that was, that was awesome. Duck eggs, yum. Very, very good eating. And go under here with this lighter brown. Give her a little bit of a shadow. Make her look, her lips look a little poofier. She needs a shadow there. Okay. Let's see. Read in the chat. I'm go back a little bit. What are we doing here? Um, books at the thrift store for a dollar. Yep. Michelle, you're right. In fact, um, our Goodwill, we have two Goodwills within, what, five miles? And they have 50% off day every two weeks. And... Um, a lot of their books are marked at like, you know, two and three dollars. So when their 50 percent off day happens, the books are just they're cheap. And we're talking like hardbacks that would go for 40 or 50 bucks in the store new. 
and you can find them there. And I'm just like, oh, you know, I go in there and I just, oh, I have to go through the books with a fine tooth comb. And my husband is so patient. And I see things that I don't get, you know, I haven't been there for a really long time though, because I haven't been able to get out of the house very well, but yeah, it's a fun place. It's a fun place. We have winter visitors that come in, you know, and they kind of take over during the winter time, which doesn't thrill me, but it's good for city commerce, you know. So there's something. The store that I worked at most recently, the um, Jim and Jory, uh, Jim and S Rocks and Stones store, it's a wholesale place. Um, I loved that job, man. It was hard, but it was really fun. And um, during the wintertime, we had like from the op to the time we opened at 10 to the time we closed at 5 and after, most of the time after until like 6.30 in, at night, it was crowded. We had like $10,000 days where there would be people coming in from back east and they'd buy all their wholesale stuff. And, you know, they'd, they'd drop five or $600 because they could and because it was a good deal wholesale yes so yeah that was fun <laughs> but that's where i get all my stuff well most of my stuff like crystals and stuff because i can go over there and i can actually see them i don't have to order them online and go i hope this is going to be okay i can see them and i can tell you know if they're good quality if they're actually Crystal and not glass, natural and not man-made, that kind of thing. Layla wants to know who the artist is. Who the artist of the picture? The artist of the picture is Selena Fennec, and there is a um, link in the description of the video to this image with the grayscale. Okay, I'm going to switch to the mm, oh uh this one this is nectar it's 1092 i'm gonna give her a little bit more of a soft peach i'm gonna go over the whole thing starting from back here but i'm gonna go really lightly and i'm gonna bring this out i'm gonna leave a little bit of a white space where the most extreme highlights are going to be because that way I will be able to highlight and then I can go back in and put more color in if I need to in those highlight spots. Probably won't need to, usually don't need to. But yeah, it's going well, it's going pretty quickly. There we go. Oh my gosh, it was so cool this morning. I'm sitting here at the table, and I'm drinking my coffee and I'm looking at the computer and there's this, in our front yard, we have these two really huge mesquite trees and they're, they're really very canopy-like. And um, this morning there was a, there was a bird out there. There was just one bird and it was before the sun came up. It was still dark. And this bird was singing so loud and it was so pretty. I was just like, well, good morning to you too. That's nice to hear first thing in the morning, you know? That was cool. I think it was a mockingbird or it could have been a, a curved, curved beak thrasher. Leaning toward the thrasher though because they live out there. The mockingbird lives out in the backyard in our ficus tree, which is also quite large. Amazing thing ha things happen to trees when you trim them correctly. I used to work for a um, long, long time ago, I used to work for a uh, landscape maintenance company. It was very, very small. It was just me and one other woman. And then we had our my son, one of my sons work for us for a little while when he was, I don't know, what was he? 13. He loved it. He was hard work and he, he didn't mind the hard work. He loved learning new stuff. So that was cool. But he also loved the paycheck. 
He was a hard worker, too. But anyway, yeah, that's where I learned how to trim trees and do it correctly so you don't, you know, you don't get overgrowth where you don't want it and you don't get um, branches going every which way and just like messing up the tree structure and stuff like that. And around here, we get such bad windstorms and they come on so suddenly that a lot of times it just blows the trees down because people shallow water their trees. We're in a desert. I mean, you know, so they shallow water their trees and the roots don't go down deep enough to hold them, the trees up during these windstorms. And I think people forget that we have those windstorms and we're talking like a microburst, you know, a small tornado. I'm not kidding. We had our roof blow off and our fence blow down. What was it a little over a year ago? That was scary. But yeah, it's, there's an art to it, trimming trees and stuff and doing it so that, that they grow optimally and, and healthy and, you know, you don't just take a trimmer to them and whack them off. You got to look at it and see what's going on there. Cora Beth, it is good to see you, sweetie. Hello. I did not see you come in. I am. I'm, I apologize. I had my head in a coloring page. Give her some. I'm gonna leave this relatively light down here because that's that light from the. Um, I'm going to put in a cauldron is coming. That actually looks like there's light coming from behind her though, from the way that her angle of her arm is, which is okay too. So we're using nectar PC 1092. Um, My goodness. Wow. Well, thank you guys for coming. I'm so happy that the room is so full. This is really cool. I hope everyone's enjoying themselves. Chatting and coloring or just chatting or just coloring. This needs to be very peachy. So if any one of you is interested in um, a glowing pumpkin tutorial, um, Lisa Matrokin has a new video that she just um, put on YouTube this morning. And um, it's all about how to make pumpkins glow. And... Um, I watched it. It's a very, very good video. Uh, she's she explains things very, very well, and she's she's really easy to follow on the videos. Um, I highly recommend watching. It's it's she's got a, like a series going for Halloween um, coloring. One of them is um, how to color uh, like how to look glamorous even in death. So it's like coloring dead. Semi-dead person, <laughs> a walking dead person. And um, she's also got a series on um, shading faces. She goes through eyes, the nose, lips, and she's got free, um, free pages on her Facebook group for all of these things. Um, a lot of the time she'll have contests for these and um, for some of them. And I highly recommend uh, watching the tutorial videos because they're, they're like I said, they're really, really good. And I've learned quite a few things from them. Even, even though I've been in art, the art world for many, many years, 
like I said, I hope I never stop learning. Hey, Layla, asked Layla asked a question. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see, where's Layla's question? I'm going to scroll back here. Do you plan to have more content? You have a really calm way. I guess it's from being <laughs> uh, more content, um, such as, um, well, I'm going to do more tutorials. I was thinking about expanding a little bit and doing um, doing flip throughs on different things. I have a couple of art books that are really, really great that I, not just coloring books, but also like art instruction books that I would love to do tutorial, uh, sorry, flip throughs and reviews on. Um, so those things are, I'm going to add. Um, and I thank you for saying that. I, I, let's see. That's what, that's, I'm hoping that I'm looking at the right thing. So. Oh yeah, Helen, it was the glowing pumpkins. Awesome. Yeah. And thank you, Rochelle. I, I am happy that you enjoy them. Oh yeah, Rebel, that's true. The greatest gifts are handmade. Totally true. Let's see. Use your tutorial for dead skin. Oh yeah. Oh, I saw that. Helen, that was really cool. Definitely. Hey, Carola. Good to see you. Let's see. Oh, you're welcome, Helen. You know what? That, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. It's good when you can learn something and then learn it well enough to, to you know, from just to convert it to another picture. It's just, I just love that. I love seeing that. I'm going to color her hand, her palm nectar, because palms are, palms are pale. My palms are very pink, but I do have, a, I have a, it's weird. My palms have, seem to have a pink undertone, but my face seems to have a blue undertone. And I had like slightly blue um, circles under my eyes all my life. My sister has brown circles under her eyes and it's, and we're not talking like an overbearing blue or brown. We're talking just tints, a very slight pale tint. So, um, but yeah, my sister, she's very dark. My little sister, I'm very pale and fair and she's got brown hair. She's my hero. She's one of my heroes. She's an amazing person. She is building herself a sunroom. She put in her own sliding glass door. She's roofing right now. And she's one year younger than I am. She's just uh, amazes me. Still kicking around out there. She rides a motorcycle and she's goes on trips all the time. And yeah, she's got a humongous heart. <sighs> Shannon, oh my God, that was so funny. You get rid of your hidden frog and, and crab and your, that was, that was hilarious. Talk about choking on your coffee. Oh my God. Yep. That's one of the reasons I enjoy that stream so much is be because you're always coming up with those hilarious, oh, I don't even know what to call them ways of saying what you're being taught. That's, that was just hilarious. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Yep. You guys are funny. You make me laugh, and that's a good thing. I feel better. I, I was very depressed this morning, but I feel better now. You guys are making me feel better. So thank you. Is it any wonder that I like streaming so much? Get all us crazy girls together. Girls and guys. 
Not to forget the crazy guys, because Mark's a carrier. There, that's much better. A little peachy, a little bit of shadow. It's going to be... I'm going to have to shadow that a little bit more, though, because I don't think that's dark enough. But we'll see what happens. And let's see. Up here, this needs a bit right on the collarbone, but I don't want to go too dark. I still want that collarbone to stick out a bit. Yep. And her chin. Don't want that to go too dark either. But I do want more shadow, like right. Something very slight. That's too dark. Get my little eraser. There we go. Oh, English. Yep. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to have to get over here on this hand. I like the grayscale. It's, 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 you don't have to color over it very, dip, or very, with very much pressure. You can just give it a little bit of color and it looks really good. Let me get some more water here. Oh, there's my kitty cat. <laughs> she's so funny. When Mark takes the dog out, she cries for them. If she's in the room. She just came into the room. so She was probably sleeping on the desk in the office. Which is where she's camping out lately when Mark's working. Which I think is adorable and a little bit pathetic on the cat's part. <laughs> and the dog just licked her head. It's a sister-brother thing. I swear it is. Am I still in frame? Okay, we're good. We're good. Yeah, I got to figure out another way to set up this camera where it's better for you guys. Um, I, uh, I can deal with a lot of weird angles and uncomfortable stuff, but I, I'd rather you guys be able to see very well than, than, uh, inconvenience to you or, you know, that looks pretty darn good. Okay. Now highlights with the, um, oh, light peach is PC 927. And we're just going to go a little bit like on these highlighted parts and a little bit around them to blend. And I'm just going to go really, really light because I don't want to burnish yet. Just going to go little circles right there because that's the end of her nose where that little ball is where the, you need a highlight. <laughs> so I'm like, you guys can't see that, but I'm touching the end of my nose. <laughs> I know. It's strange. I'm strange. Talk with my hands. And the other day, my hands were full. I was talking with my feet. <laughs> Had my feet up in a chair, and I was wiggling them as I was talking. Strange, but true. Uh, it's nice working with a picture where the, the subject is so pretty to begin with, you know? I mean, not that there are, are a lot that are not pretty. There's a lot that are pretty but I just I don't know I guess I'm partial to this one I like the way she's using her hands and oh you know what I completely miss these fingertips I like the way that her hands are, are situated expressive like that hands can say so much it's better now you can actually see the end of her fingers ends of her fingers there we go there we go you need anything else over here oh cool there's a little oh that's neat there's a little ivy down here that's pretty cool oh hey you know what i think i'm gonna put on this little pig here i think i'm going to use the um Chestnut and the nectar on this 
on the sow and I'm going to um, color that right now because I wanted to use these same colors on different things in the picture because it's um, it's a way to tie the whole picture in together. If you have your picture, it creates a harmony in the picture and balance. I don't know if you guys uh, watch um, Karen uh, Zucchini Kitty a whole lot. I, I know that some of you know who she is and you watch her, her videos. Um, she puts in, she makes it a point to put in a particular color at least three places in a picture because it, it creates that balance. Kenny loves the skin. Oh, thank you. Hey, Kenny's there? Dang it, when did you sneak in, lady? Mousy's Thank you. Too. Oh my God, no, Mousy's been there. Oh. Thank you, Kenny. I appreciate that. And it is good to see you. Thank you for being here. Yay. So I think I'm going to go a little bit darker down here because I want that color to stand out a little bit on the grayscale part. Just a little bit though. So it doesn't need to be a lot. There we go. And it, it's funny, you know, all of these animals seem to have a, um, like an outline. And I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is put in like a cloud blue or something so they all kind of glow because they are her sacred animals. So I thought maybe that would be fitting, appropriate. Wow, that fan sure did make a difference. It's a ceiling fan, and, and wow, it was, my shirt is really warm. <laughs> it's polyester. I don't like polyester, but it's a cool shirt. It's kind of a, it looks like kind of like a 70s. I love it. I shop at thrift stores a lot because you can get clothes that no one else has. Um, usually they're in good condition. Well, I wouldn't buy them if they weren't, but yeah, you know, thrift stores rock. Plus it's reusing stuff. So that's really important to me too. Much rather buy, uh, recycle clothes than go out and buy a bunch of new clothes. Although with leggings, it's really hard to recycle. <laughs> leggings are a little difficult. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with this little peach color and I'm gonna just do some highlights like through the middle where her belly is. She's going to look like she's got skin tones too. Yes. And up here on her head, let's give her a little bit of peach. Not bad. And I think what I'll do too is I'll go in since this is such a, this part up here is such a light grayscale. I think I'm going to take a, a fine point marker, uh, sorry, a pigment pen and uh, touch up the darker spots like behind the ear and the eye and the nose and mouth, maybe a little bit on the feet and just um, fill that in with some darker. I also have a, um, the pigment pen that is brown. So that might work better than a black because black might be too stark. It might be too much of a, a bold line, even if it is very thin. There, my little piggy. So cute. There we go. Not bad. Uh, let's see. I forget anything down. I wonder if I did this. I can barely see the color, so it's kind of hard to go. <gasps> did it? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, let's see. I am going to take my darkest color, and I'm going to touch up these shadows just a teeny bit, the sienna brown. And I think I'm going to sharpen it also because I'm going to need that point. Hey, Sean, 
good to see you. Man, I love that flip through that you did, the hollow moon flip through. That was awesome. Those images are really cool. I mean, I know I said that on the comments, but man, her work. Sometimes her grayscale is a little dark, but I can handle that. And sometimes I look at her images and I'm just like amazed. Who's leaving? Helen. Helen, aw. Okay. It was good to see you, Helen. You take care of yourself, okay? Yep. Wreck it, Ralph, Sean. Oh my God. Oh man, now you're making me laugh. Um, yeah, I didn't used to have a light touch. I used to have a horribly heavy touch, and and the first um, colored pencil drawing that I did was it was a um, it was a freehand drawing that I did. Oh, and I was going to explain this to you in another stream, and I forgot. Anyway, it was a this freehand drawing that I did called an ex exquisite corpse, and um, it was on black paper and I was so heavy handed that it was difficult for me to, to um, blend. Um, an exquisite corpse, I don't know if you guys know what this is, but it's an extremely fun project between two or more people, usually just two people. And what it, it is made up of is you get one piece of paper, okay? And one person draws or colors on half. Then that half is covered up, leaving a strip in the middle of some of this drawing that was done over here, just the strip in the middle that a second artist can come and work off of. So what I did was I um, I did a, an exquisite corpse with a lady named um, Valentine. What was her first name? I can't remember what her first name was. Deborah Valentine, Deborah Valentine. And um, this was on deviantart.com. I was in a group called The Exquisite Corpse and um, Everyone was doing projects and stuff. And this wasn't the only one that I did, but it was the most interesting. Um, so she did this half and then sealed it up with cardboard and tape. And of course, I didn't, I love surprises. So I did not peek, but she left like, you know, a little half inch strip sticking out. And I just worked off of that and drew my own stuff on this side. And um, her, her artwork far outshone mine, but it was so fun to do that to finish up my half and go okay I'm done and then contact her and go hey Deborah can we look now <laughs> because after you look then then we were posting our pictures on the exquisite corpse deviant art page and we would both get like I don't think I I think I still have that I think I still have it she told me to keep it but um yeah, it was super, super fun. I think I should start something like that on um, Facebook. That would be fun. If shipping wasn't so dang much to other countries, that would that would be super cool because um, then we could collaborate with uh, with people in other countries too. And oh my God, yeah, I just think it would be really cool to go international with this. Deborah was in California, and I was in um, was I in California? It was a long time ago. I think I was already in Arizona, but. Um, so yeah, the exquisite corpse. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. Just another project, right? I wouldn't do it right now. Anyway, this time of the year is way too busy, but, um, focus my focus is out. Yeah, your hands are really focused, but How's that? Yep. Okay, cool. Thank you for letting me know that Mark. Actually, uh, somebody else brought it up. Um, Sean has a question for you, Mark. Yeah, I answered that. Depends oh. The size the oh. <laughs> Bethann! Welcome. Hello. Good to see you. Okay. Let me give her a little bit more shadow right here. That's better. And right here, right where the fabric is. There we go. A little bit more dark shadows up here. Around her jawbone. It'll soften that up a bit. 
And back here, neck needs a little bit more definition. I'm going to give her red hair, I think. I might give her like coppery hair. I'm not sure yet. I just think she needs red hair, especially if she's going to have green and blue clothing. That would look really awesome. Deep in the shadow here and here. That's cool. And blend it out a little. Yep. Uh, so many little details. I love the details though. I'm always I've always been a detail oriented person as far as art goes. My drawings are very, very detailed. A lot of the um stuff that I do is like collage. Um surrealism and um it's like stream of consciousness stuff but i just go to town and draw whatever comes into my head and each thing is is given it they take me a while because each each item in the drawing is given a lot of attention to detail so and he says you should do copper hair copper hair i think i will i think that that's probably how i'm gonna go with this Oh, thank you, Mousy. Hey, do we have a link to the uh, Facebook group? Yes, there's a, a link to the Facebook group for the for my um, YouTube page in the description of the video. Oh my gosh, I forgot, completely missed her ear. And how many times do you hear that a day? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna go in. With, I'm gonna do chestnut on her ear. A little bit of chestnut underneath. Hey, did you sell? So, did you share the pictures of the, the new leather work on Instagram? No, I did not. Then the answer, Sean, is no. <laughs> the answer, Sean, is no. Um, apparently, you wanted to know if the pictures were on Instagram. Yeah, no, I haven't, but I could. I could do that. Mark just needs to get his own Instagram. That's all there is to it. Better have a hard enough time with freaking Facebook. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that, but he said he has a hard enough time with freaking Facebook. <laughs> and I get it. But yeah, Instagram is, is better and easier than Facebook, I think. It's just more user friendly, it seems like. Uh, I actually got a nap today, too. Well, I took a nap a little bit after breakfast because I just I just needed it. I, I don't sleep well at night. I don't sleep well at all anyway. But, um, yeah, naps are awesome. This needs to be darker in here. There we go. Practice, practice, practice. Kind of, I kind of look at every time I, I start a new project, a new picture, a new coloring, or something. I look at it as, as practice. Say thank you to Nick and Tina. Thank you to Nick and Tina. Huh. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's wonderful, you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I encourage you. You know, go over there, um, ask to join, or. Um, if you're already there, post stuff. Um, I, I, I said the group guidelines and in, in the group guidelines, I say just two coloring pages a day because I don't want it to be overwhelmed with coloring pages um, because I want other other content also. Like um, I want, oh no, Mark. What? I think I left the, the sprinkler on in the front yard. Okay. It's been on a really, really long time and okay. that's bad. Our water bill is going to be astronomical. Oh, my God. Well, my plants are watered, that's for sure. The bird bath is probably full. I keep water in a bird bath because it gets so hot. I, I want to be able to, you know, make sure that the birds have water. And I used to feed them seeds when we could afford seeds, but 
we had to cut corners where we could. So stop feeding them seeds. And I I put out like if I have fruit that's going bad, I'll put the fruit out there and, and I'll put it in places where they can uh, where they can find it and stuff. We have a really lovely swamp now. We have a lovely swamp now, Mark says. Wonderful. That's just I'm sorry. I I, I no, don't don't worry. <laughs> I didn't want to flood the front yard. That's why our trees are so happy. Not that I do it regularly, it's just, it happens. Get in there and get some of them folds. There we go. Down in the darkest corners. There we go. Love to meet bugs. Believe me, there's a lot of bugs in that front yard because it, it's a little overgrown. I haven't been able to do yard work lately. So, yeah. But, you know, what's really cool is we have these little geckos that live out there, too. And um, we have some decorative, some big rocks, decorative rocks out there. And the geckos live in, inside the piles of the rocks. And it's really, really cool because they're such cool little guys. I mean... Oh my God, they're all speckly and they, it, you know how a praying mantis will tip its head, it'll cock its head and look at you? These geckos do the same darn thing. Of course, they don't look the same because they're not a bug, but yeah, it's, they're, they're amazing little creatures. In fact, I did a, I took some pictures of, of one, one time it was hanging out on the rocks and I was able to get like five or six really good pictures, close ups too. That was fun. He just sat there and let me take his picture. And then he ran away. <laughs> there we go. That's better. I can see her chin better now. I'm going to put in some of this also. And this is the nectar. Uh, let's see. PC 10921092. I'm just going to blend that down a little bit because I don't want to I don't want a strong, heavy line. I, I want to kind of blend it down a little. I want her skin and, and stuff to look soft. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Okay, now I am going to... Hmm. While I have the... Let's see. Chestnut? Let me think here. Chestnut? No. Hmm. I'm going to save her eyes for last, which is what I normally do. I think I'm going to work on her the cloth right here. I think I'm going to make that um, make that green and make this blue. So let's go get some green. Something dark and nice. Let's see, maybe this one, maybe I'll just layer a few different shades so it looks, yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll get two or three of them out. Oh, that's pretty. Ooh, I like that one. Uh-oh. Yeah, I think so. Mm, yeah, that'll work. Wait, what's that? I think spring green would probably be better for my lightest. What is this? Spring green? There it is. So here's what I have. Dark green, 908. And yep, that's a barrel. I don't know if you guys can see. No, you can't because it's not in frame. This is one that I got from my mom. So it's like vintage Prismacolor. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, let's see. Uh, so we've got dark green 908. And then grass green 909. Kelly green 1096. And light, this light green, this is spring green. And this is PC 913. So I, I may not use all of those, but I wanted to have them all out. 
Oh, are you kidding me? You could hear that? He meowed back? Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. Bye, Arlene. I didn't even see you come in, Arlene. I'm sorry. Sweet dreams. Have good sleep. So, so um, Sean, is, is Shadow a boy or a girl? <laughs> Trying to find out if, if um, Celine has a boyfriend now. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, so I'm going to sharpen my lightest green, and I'm going to start with that one, like right in the lightest part. <gasps> a drama queen. <laughs> oh, my God, that's funny. Oh, my gosh. Well, Celine is not. Celine is not a, a drama queen. She's a, she's, she can't stand a dirty litter box, but other than that, she's pretty laid back. She's, she's really... It, the only problem we ever have with her is she likes to eat adhesive stuff and then she pukes. I know that's TMI. I apologize. But yeah, it makes her sick. So, but she still does it. It's like you'd think she'd learn after chewing on some an, an adhesive and then like tape or, or sticky stuff on an envelope, like a shipping envelope. After chewing on it 50 times and then, you know, getting sick after that 50 times you'd think she'd learn but no it must taste really good or something i don't know <laughs> i gotta tell you sean that made that made mark laugh <laughs> okay so since we've got the light coming from down here i'm gonna put the the lightest part on the, like the bottom ish here and I'm just going really light to begin with because I'm going to do layers. Layer, layer, everything. So lightest part down here. I love it. love coloring because you can just move on to whatever you want to move on to. You know, you don't have to do a specific thing one right after the other. Like maybe oil painting, you have to do certain things. You can just color and color. Lay low on snow if you'll continue this on your next stream. On the next stream, yes, I can do that. I will wait to finish this. Um, Sunday is the next stream. And it's in the same time frame from, and for me, it's two to four. And it's Pacific time, Pacific time. Um, I'm not sure what that is for all of you guys because I'm horrible with time zones. And Laura said the same thing in her stream this morning. She's like, I don't know about time zones. And I was just like, oh my God, does that sound familiar? But anyway, yeah, um, I can definitely wait to finish this. That's no problem whatsoever. Um, uh, let's see. Generally, I do colorings on Tuesdays, and then I do something else on Sundays. But I can do coloring on Sunday, and then something else on Tuesday, and, and switch it around. That's not a problem either. I'm flexible that way. I'm gonna get rid of some of this. Oh darn it! Now that tip is so sharp, it just keeps crumbling. Wow, that sharpener is really good. That's this is a sharpener that I use. Well, some of the time anyway. It's a magnesium blade. You're up too high. I am up too high. There we go. Magnesium blade, replaceable blades. And when I bought this, I bought um, like a, two packages of blades because I know me. And I'm going to try to make this go back into focus here. Come on. It down here. Down here, little camera. Come on, you can do it. Ooh. Oh, come on. Okay, let's try it. I have pencil shavings in my hand. 
Okay, let's try this again. Center and down. Focus. Oh, come on now. Don't give me a hard time. Try it with your pencil instead. Try it with my pencil? Why is that going to make a difference? Come on, you can do it. Boy, isn't technology grand? I'm sorry, guys. We'll figure this out. Okay, try flipping the... There we go. There we go. We got it. We got it. Laura! Hey, Laura, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming by. Awesome. Yeah, me too, Laura. They, they are really much more convenient with the replaceable blades. It's way easier <laughs> to deal with. I do have a, a, another, like I have this one. Oh, I have this one. It's a Dale 155. And um, it's really nice. It's got this little thing where you can put the pencil in there. And um, I had this because I'm just going to get stuff all over it. Hold on a sec. So this comes out say you get a lead stuck you can take this out and, and get it out with a wire which is nice because um otherwise you know it, it gets something stuck in there and you can't get your to your blades to get it out and you're just kind of that's really highly inconvenient but um yeah so you can clean this one out it's pretty simple it's all plastic mostly except for like you know the really important parts but I like it. It makes it's it makes a really good point. What I usually do is <clears throat> I'll wait until my pencils get really dull and then I'll sharpen them in here. And then after that, I'll sharpen them with the manual sharpener, the, the little this guy. And then that seems to work really, really well. And I know it seems like overkill to use two different pencil sharpeners, but um, <laughs> I've done it a lot of different ways for the Prismacolors. That seems to work best for me. And I don't know if you guys know this, but um, when you're using a pencil sharpener like this with the rotary blades, uh, a good way to clean out your pencil sharpener to clean it and to make sure that it's lubricated is to put just a regular graphite pencil in there and sharpen it and sharpen it just a little bit too much. You know, I mean, graphite pencils are pretty cheap, but um, way cheaper than a, most of them. You get a cheap graphite pencil like a Ticonderoga or whatever that, those are. Uh that you can buy a pack of 10 for $2 or whatever and at Walmart and um, use those to clean this. Or you could alternately, you could just use graphite powder and you could just put that in there and then turn the crank and that lubricates and cleans your blade. So um, it's a good way to take care of your rotary pencil sharpeners. And because I didn't want to interrupt you, uh, Pat likes the skin tone. Oh, thank you, Pat. We're working it. We're working it. Let's see here. I don't know if you guys can see the green. It's very light. It's very, very light. But yeah, we're going to go there. And then I'm going to color. I'm just going to add a little color here and like an undertone of the light green because I want it to look really saturated, like a very rich color. And then I'm going to go over it with the other colors and blend. So that'll be cool. The male person is here. Our male lady is so cool. She found out I was sick. She goes, she goes, I, I know uh, she came in one day, she came up with a package and she's like, I never see you working in your front yard anymore. I never see you like, you know, working with your, oh, I'm moving on to the Kelly green PC 1096. Um, she goes, I never see you working in your yard anymore because I used to be out there a lot and it used to look really beautiful. It's all overgrown now, but I should have just taken a picture of that for my, for overgrown for inked over and just like, you know, converted it to an ink drawing. But anyway, the thing is, 
Yeah, she offered, she's like, if you ever need um need me to bring you groceries or anything, I don't live that far away. I just live over in Mesa, which isn't that far from here. It's only like the border of Mesa from where I am is like four and a half minutes. But I just, I started crying when she said that because I was just like, that is the sweetest thing. You don't even hardly know me and you're still offering to help. That's just amazing. I'm going to put a little bit of this darker green down under here. See, she's got like a little, it looks like fur right here. So it's kind of sticking out. There's going to be a shadow inside of here. So I'm going to start that shadow off with this sort of medium green. And then I'm going to work back down into the darker greens. And um, I may actually put some red down in the deepest corner just to give it that extra contrast. There we go. What time is it? Holy crap. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, is it okay if I say crap? It's been two hours. I was just like going to keep going. I, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. And I think somebody else is coming on. So I, I need to get out of here. I need to let you guys go. Not too bad. Not too bad. So let's hold this up, you guys. I'll have to like. She's coming along. I love that wild hair. Oh, my gosh. That looks so cool. There's the little piggy. The sow. Her eyes look real funky right now because they don't have any color in them. <laughs> but, yeah, you know what? I need to let you guys go, and I need to – it's um, getting close to dinner time for us. And But I want to say, you guys, thank you. Thank you so much for everybody. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for making me laugh. I feel so much better. And thank you for the thumbs up. I, I hope you guys enjoy this because I do. And um, I really appreciate you all. Really appreciate you. And Nick and Tina, thank you for being my mod. Thank you for, for – everything that you do, the links and everything. And uh, Mark, thank you for being a mod too. I appreciate it. Even though you're sitting like 15 feet away. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> oh my goodness. And um, oh, you're welcome, Laura. Thank you for streaming this morning. That was fun. I always, I just really love watching people work. And Laura, did that. She, she posted it on Instagram. She did her um, mermaid, magical mermaid. <gasps> totally gorgeous. And those eyes. Oh my God. Talk about well done eyes. Woohoo. Yes. You have a good night too, Nick and Tino. See you soon and happy anniversary again. Oh, happy anniversary. It's their YouTube anniversary. They've been on YouTube for a year. Mine's easy. It's, it's September 1st. So Next September 1st, I'll be doing something special for my one-year anniversary. Thank you, Rochelle. Aw. Love to you, too. Oh, yeah, Laura. Love it. Yep. Good night, Sean. Sleep well. Give your cat a smooch on the head for me. <laughs> Tell him Celine says, how you doing? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um. Yes, thank you guys very, very much. I so appreciate this. And I will see you all Sunday, same time frame, same channel, of course. And um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing, but hopefully it'll be something fun for everyone. So I, I appreciate it. Much love, you guys. Take care. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.